Greetings, New Zealand naturopath Eric Baker. I'm author of Candida Crusher, and I'm also the formulator of a range of products called Candida. Thanks for tuning into my video today. I've got a question here from a guy called Stephen Hutchinson, and Stephen is in a place called Sale in Victoria, Australia. Stephen's asking me a question, uh, can antibiotics cure Candida? That's a very good question, Steve. Uh, antibiotics don't cure any kind of disease. What they do, uh, what they can do in some instances is fight infections. But the problem is, in most cases, this is in my opinion, they tend to be over-prescribed and prescribed too freely for too many different kinds of conditions. For example, I've heard many instances of a person having a small cut on the finger and then going on a 7-10 to 10 day course of antibiotic. In many cases, patients have prescribed antibiotics for digestive related problems. Now, this is, in my opinion, a travesty <clears throat> when you get an antibiotic, particularly concurrent courses of antibiotics, because it creates an incredible amount of damage to the gut microbiota or the bacteria that reside in the gut. So, don't forget the term antibiosis means anti life. So, you're actually killing life, you're destroying a huge amount of life in the digestive system when what we want is a pro-life product because if you think about it you don't win wars by fighting wars you just create more conflict okay so a lot of people think that wars really uh, solve problems but they don't people have been fighting for thousands of years and they'll probably fight for thousands more years and they don't seem to solve any kind of problems and currently in 2015 i believe there are wars in over 60 countries now, when you take an antibiotic, <clears throat> you're creating a huge uh, turmoil internally. The chances are that you may well have destroyed some of the pathogens that, you know, that the doctor is trying to target. But the problem is you can't destroy them all. And what's, what's even worse is you're actually destroying a huge amount of the beneficial flora that live in and around the gut. And this creates a big problem for the body at many different levels. Multiple species get wiped out. Here's an interesting picture for you to look at. Antibiotics in the gut and microbiota. So this really is a healthy digestive system. I've held this picture up, I think, previously. Now you're looking at that and thinking, what the hell is this guy on about? That's the Amazon rainforest. That's got nothing to do with the gut. This guy's nuts. Well, I'm not nuts. I'm trying to portray a picture here to you of a very, very powerfully, uh, beautifully developed ecosystem. So you've got thousands of species of plants, animals, you know, insects, all basically living in a very sort of carefully defined ecosystem. What you can't see on this picture uh, are the jaguars, are the anacondas, are the tarantulas, are the poison dart frogs, are all the interesting creatures that live in this environment. <clears throat> and they all depend on each other. Some kill others. So, you know, some basically can only survive because they need to feed on other creatures in the environment. There are multiple species of uh, very good plants in here. There are some plants that are not so good. There are some parasitic plants that live in the rainforest. You know, they, they thrive by, by sucking the sap from other plants. Well, it's the same in your gut. You've got parasites that live in there. <clears throat> what they're just discovering now, what I'm finding very interesting, is they actually now believe, <clears throat> excuse me, but bug in my throat, they actually believe that some helminths or flatworms, which are a kind of parasite, are actually necessary to live in your digestive system. That's very interesting information. That information has only just recently come to light, that we actually need a small amount of bad bacteria or parasites, which are seen to be very nasty. We actually need those in our digestive system. You know, so having bugs like, you know, we've got in the rainforest, we've got all kinds of creatures that live there, some we see as bad, some we see as good. And it's the same in our gut. We've got many different kinds of, of bugs that live in there, and they all have you know, a good cohabitation going on there. So, so what we've got is, a, as I mentioned, a healthy rainforest here, but then what we're going to do is we're going to put the patient on antibiotics for about 10 days, you know, 14 days, and unfortunately we're going to napalm the forest. Now that picture you saw there of the one tree standing, that's a person who's had four or five doses of antibiotics in a 12 month period. They're getting increasing reduction on the, on the microbiota. So they're, they're reducing more and more of the beneficial bacteria. It's going to be harder and harder uh, for these to come back again because what also happens in the interim is the person will be smoking or drinking Coke 
having pizzas and having crappy food, living a high stress lifestyle, and there'll be not much attention paid at all to restoring the gut function. They might pay a bit of lip service to taking a probiotic. So here we go again, we've got a picture, a nice picture of different kinds of bacteria that live in the gut. So this is a microscopic uh, picture, obviously. You can see all the lovely colors, the purples, the blues. And then, of course, we put the person on antibiotics, and we ended up with just, you know, a couple of select species. So the point I'm trying to make here is it's generally not necessary to take an antibiotic for a digestive-related problem. Even in helicobacter infections, infections of the upper mucosa in, in the stomach, I'm finding that antibiotics just don't really do much for people. Some of the highly experienced doctors and gastroenterologists I've spoken to at integrated conferences tell me that they actually don't even give triple therapy anymore. They don't even treat a patient with antibiotics for uh, stomach-related infection because they find the recurrence rate is over 95%. So it's rare that you're going to wipe out a bug and going to keep it away with an antibiotic. How we actually um, you know, can treat people uh, with natural alternatives to antibiotics is, is a topic of a whole new video. So, But um, I want you to bear in mind that probiotics do play an, a very important role and um, prebiotic foods play an important role. And I've done some videos on prebiotic foods. I'm not a fan of prebiotics in dietary supplements. I just find they create bigger problems. You know, um, So you don't really want to go for things like inulin and FOS along with probiotics. Not, not a good idea. Look at taking a good antifungal product, antibacterial, alongside a good probiotic enzyme formula. So those two formulas work quite well together. And generally, uh, when you do take that approach, you don't need to take antibiotics anymore, especially for gut-related conditions. So um, I hope that answers your question um, there, um, Stephen, regarding the uh, do antibiotics cure candida. They don't cure candida. In fact, they make candida worse because they don't touch yeast, they only kill bacteria, allowing the candida to proliferate. Uh, so you don't really want to go there. Thanks for tuning in.